it's your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. We're focusing in on a viewer question that we got in and I want to focus in and zoom in on it uh, as the topic of this video and that is to go more in depth and explore how to rewire the effects after being uh, gaslighted. So rewiring your mind, uh, getting a new perspective, getting a fresh angle on life your life and really the big picture after being having prolonged exposure to a harmful or destructive individual such as a narcissist or a psychopath and how to rewire basically the the uh the brain the neural uh pathways are really a, a sequence of uh, cells that wire and fire together so for example if you lift up your hand there's, you know, a uh, part of the uh, brain which, of course, gives that command. And then also uh, the wiring of the brain is also responsible for much of our emotions, um, our thought process, our self-belief, our cognitive uh, framework, and how we look at the world, how we look at ourselves, how we look at relationships, and how we really, how we really connect with others and what we desire out of life. So a lot of that, of course, and of course, also is occurring at the soul level. So really, that's where we want to dive in deep. And I want to give uh, much love and a shout out to all you deep divers, those of you who are really part of the healing revolution here at Peace and Harmony. So uh, really, kudos to you. And uh, thank God that you are now emerging and ascending and learning to rise above the gaslighting the depersonalization and the objectification that tends to occur with uh, within relationships within these individuals. And I want to dive in and really explore what the, uh, the, the process or the beginning of the gaslighting, which really kind of is set up in the uh, love bombing and then kind of the on the cusp of the devaluation stage. And that is the um, experience of being um, objectified. And the objectification really occurs when an individual who has a personality character disorder, who has a superior sense of self, a heightened sense of self-importance, and then coupled with a profound lack of empathy. So without empathy, you really do not feel, understand, or relate to another person's viewpoint, their needs, their wishes. Um, the fact that they even have needs, it doesn't really kind of crumb across their mind. Um, and this is very dehumanizing, which means it tends to feel, make you feel separate from them. And when you are not acknowledged for your autonomy, um, when you're not given a sense of autonomy, which means a, a sense of acting independently or, you know, being on your own, in this independence, autonomy is... For example, when a toddler is able to kind of navigate their toys in their room without uh, parental supervision, they're self-directed. They, they have what we experience as autonomy. And if, if a child is shame scolded and oppressed, in other words, treated in a cruel and inhumane way and not allowed to exercise that autonomy, they then enter into the stage of inferiority. So they don't really um, go through that stage successfully. Instead of developing autonomy, they develop a sense of inferiority, which then really, uh, then becomes you know shame, guilt, shyness, um, underachieving, poor grades, uh, substance abuse issues, uh, you know those sorts of, of personal development tracks. And so if then if then on the on the other side of the uh, developmental stage is autonomy which leads to independence and um, self-industry and confidence and self-esteem. And then that, you know, then becomes uh, part of a very functioning and contributory individual, which then has, you know, is then able to give back to society and continues that through the later stages in their life. So when one is objectified, when one is dehumanized, they really are, are faulted or shamed for that sense of independence that autonomy, that self-direction, which is part of every human being. So that is basically frowned upon by a narcissist and it's gaslighted away. It's brainwashed away. It's told that, you know, certain things that you feel, believe, desire, or want aren't important, aren't real, won't happen. 
And they do this as a way to manipulate you so you, in essence, are basically just a tool to them. So as a tool, as you all know, um, if you were to go to a hardware store, you know, you would see an abundance of tools, hammers, saws, drills, um, measuring tape, things of this nature. These are all tools to accomplish a job. And really, when one is objectified, one is rendered to the state of a tool, uh, basically being hung on the shelf, you know, uh, put on, you know, hung on the hook, uh, put on the, you know, uh, put in the garage, basically then to be brought out when one wants uh, to achieve something. And in essence, that is really what um, objectification, uh, objectification from a narcissist or a psychopathic individual is essentially like. It's a, it's a perception that you are essentially a tool, an object. You have no more significance, meaning, or relevance to them than a basic physical tool. And for a lot of people, this is very difficult to understand. But if you have been um, objectified or dehumanized, that is exactly what it is. Your emotional being has no relevance. It has no bearing. Your perspective is, is not taken into consideration. It's not validated. It's not attended to. In the psychopath, um, there might be something which is called more of a cognitive empathy, which you will feel really with a um, psychopathic individual who displays what is known as cognitive empathy. And that is, you know, intellectually, they understand that um, you have feelings, needs, or wants. You know, they don't really get it in their heart. They don't really get it in their uh, the expression of empathy, which is the ability to understand someone as a separate and uh, individual being. So to have empathy, you have to be able to see other as um, different, separate, independent, and unique. And that um, <clears throat> in that in that very knowledge um, becomes there's a respect, there's an acknowledgement, there's attunement. <clears throat> and people display you know, a whole uh, uh, spectrum of empathy and the ability to do this, to know this. Some people are extremely empathic. Some people are you know, uh, generally so, and some display a little, but really when we are talking about a narcissist or a psychopath, they really are quite deficient and devoid of empathy. So that's why we see this high risk behavior. They're just not uh, afraid of the aftermath. They're not afraid of hurting people's feelings. They basically um, plow through people <clears throat> in a very objectified manner, looking them essentially as a tool. So knowing this to be the case, and if you need to basically, um, you know, attune a narcissist or a psychopath to the fact that you understand and you're going no contact, you're breaking off the relationship. You know, you just have to say, no, um, stop. That does not fly here. When they are just kind of, uh, you know, inattentive to your needs and you have to understand in your heart of hearts to get through the gaslighting that um, this person will never be able to, they just have a character deficit, they have a disorder. They're not going to be able to get you. They're not going to understand your needs. They don't have the same needs. And um, they very much look at people like a tool. So for a real, um, you know, if you really need a bold statement, um, you can come at the um, psychopath or the narcissist and basically just say, if you need like a real high powered uh, backlash, you know, you can just tell them if you need a tool, go to the hardware store. That's not me and then be done with it. You know, tell them, you know, if you need, uh, you know, if you, if you need another object to fulfill your goals, you know, go shopping, you know, just let them know that they're, that they, you, you get that you've been so abused. Um, you've been so overlooked. You've been so objectified, which in essence is really kind of like, um, it is a form of entrapment or enslavement where somebody basically just looks at you as a means to their end. So um, that is um, in, in an unhealthy and inhumane <clears throat> uh, view of, of humankind, but that is really the mindset of a narcissist or a psychopath where um, they then will try to constantly reaffirm this sense of inferiority in others through um, making you feel like you are constantly at fault or you know, constantly at doubt that you're not doing something correctly. 
Um, this is how they grind people down. This is how they break people down. This is how the gaslighting sets up. When someone breaks you down, basically, if it's if you're repeatedly um, treated this way, eventually um, the um, adrenals go into such fatigue from the fight or flight that they literally are exhausted of themselves. So we hear about all these different diseases and disorders now, and particularly that of adrenal fatigue syndrome. And that is when you are in a chronic space of stress. And stress is basically when you are forcing the body or mind or spirit to do something other than what it is meant for. So if you have really experienced this anxiety, this stress, this feeling like something is wrong, this is really sort of fatigue, this exhausted, this emptiness, chances are because that person is not um, treating you with mutual respect and empathy. And you can, uh, you basically, you are not really going to be able to survive that. Um, you are not going to be able to withstand it for long. This is what causes, you know, a lot of suicide ideation is that, you know, people feel uh, so objectified, yet they don't have a word for it. They don't have a term for it. They become gaslighted. They become to self-doubt. They they doubt their reality. They, they're out of touch with their own talents, their own, what I call their own human side, their own um, humanity. And so it's very important to restore that when you we are talking about recovering and rewiring from um, gaslighting. I mean, I, I could do, uh, go on for hours about this, but I want you to understand the real bottom line is that you have to go no contact from these individuals because with a lack of empathy, they really are heartless. Um, they, there's a, a, um, a deficit within them and it's nothing you want to uh, try to change or overcome within them or help them see the light or help them to enjoy life more. I know oftentimes people who have been um, in relationships with narcissists are trying to get to open up the door for them in life. They're trying to get them to, um, you know, see things your way. You're trying to get them to, you know, realize that you have um, enough love to give for the both of you and that you know, you will go to end of the earth for them that you love them so much and yet it's not reciprocated. And uh, basically it becomes a huge, uh, you know, what I call a, a, an emotional deficit on your side where you feel so objectified, so inattended to that eventually become depleted and emotionally what I call basically emotionally bankrupt. You feel like your emotional self-worth is gone. Um, and that is a, a what we call low self-esteem or low valuing of self. And that is not how you're meant to go through life. It's very important to realize that the objectif objectification treatment is housed within the narcissist or psychopath themselves. That has nothing to do with the real you. The abuse has nothing to do with what you have done. The abuse is separate from your behaviors. The abuse is separate from your values. The abuse is separate from yourself as an individual and a soul. The abuse is part of the abuser. The abuse belongs to the abuser. It doesn't belong to you. So if you can see that separation, you're really, really, really going to be on really catapulting your life towards healing because the abuse belongs to the abuser. It has nothing to do with your true personality, your true drive, your true values, um, your your true uh, you know IQ, your emotional intelligence, um, really what you're physically capable of. They will completely continue to downgrade you and objectify you and dehumanize you through these gaslighting techniques, through this self-doubt, through you know telling you that this is not of value, this is not important. And so if you have become so admired um, with them or so enmeshed, so entrenched, then you have to go no contact. And you know, part of the rewiring after the gaslighting phase is to rehumanize yourself. It really is to begin to place important value on all of your senses, the sense of touch, the sense of sm smell, the sense of sight, the sense of uh, hearing, your kinesthetic, you know, your ability to move and have all these basically and taste, you know, all of your senses need to come in and back into alignment in what I call basically realigning of your true emotional self, your true spiritual self, your true physical self, and kind of relax back in and rehumanize yourself. Uh, because chances are you've been devoid of these. Um, you've been devoid of good touch. You've been devoid of good uh, 
good thoughts, you know, that are um, good sounds. You've heard a lot of harsh, abrasive words about yourself. You've been objectified. You've been dehumanized. So this has hurt the ears, if you will. It's hurt the, the emotional ears. You've seen some things that you don't want to see again or that you've been treated the way. And then this continues to replay in your mind and creates the racing thoughts, the intrusive thoughts, you know, the flashbacks and part of the gaslighting. And then this tends to all rewire within the brain and continue what we call, you know, a habituated uh, thoughts or um, a distorted sense of reality or a distorted sense of yourself. So realize that the, um, the pathological individual will not want you to grow, expand, and become the best that you are because you could outshine them because you will exist in an empathic state which if you're part of this healing revolution, you have an empathy, you have a heart, you have this knowledge that there's something more to your life that you're meant to experience, feel, and become, and have. And so it's time to attend to this and acknowledge this. So really begin to rehumanize yourself. Get a vision of really what you want to do, be, have, and become in the future. Get a vision of your best self. Get a vision which is like a dream. It's an imagination. Some people have a very good imagination. Some people need to, you know, go and get some magazines and cut pictures out and put it together as a collage on a vision board and have this in front of them as a reminder. You need to rehumanize and heal. You need to have reminders around you. You need to feed your senses. Basically fill that inner self, that, that gaping hole, that wound. You need to heal it with the positive, positive images, positive, um, you know, you can go to a magazine and you can cut out words, pictures, feelings, expressions, things that are energizing and healing to you and that you want to um, experience in your emotional and physical and verbal repertoire. And you want to begin to expand your self-talk, which is the, the talking that you do for yourself. Oftentimes people don't even have a, a positive self-talk. They've been so wired to have a negative self-talk, which is what, you know, what people say to themselves. You can't do it. You will never become, you know, you are sick. You are this, you know, you've been assigned these uh, erroneous false roles by the people in the messages that they have told you or what we call negative validation. So you have then internalized this, which means you have accepted what this pathological person told you at face value. And so now you are possessing of a pathology or a projected pathology. And so, you know, it's part, that's why it's so important to go no contact because they will keep you in that objectifi objectified role. It's absolutely um, a hideous thing to see have happened to a good, kind, loving um, in individual. I mean, they will take people for all that they're worth. And it's very sad um, to see this occur. And if you've known people um, or are that person, have compassion and empathy for yourself, which means, you know, embracing yourself, saying, oh my gosh, you know, this is what has occurred. I am now getting a vision um, for myself of the future and I'm getting a vision board. I'm cutting out pictures from, uh, you know, from a magazine, from posters. I'm getting a vision board. If you haven't done this yet, you need to, to get a, um, you know, just a nice um, poster board that you can get at a uh, dollar store, a, um, a, you know, general retailer. You don't have to go to an art store. But, you know, and then get some, you know, scissors and a glue stick and get some magazines and cut out pictures of that which you feel resonate and identify with. It can be pictures, it can be um, words, it can be colors, it can be statements. And these are all things that you want to go and experience, that you want to develop in your life. Things that you know that you've always wanted to do. I mean, it can be as simple as getting a watch, a pair of shoes, Going for, you know, starting a, a, a walking routine, um, starting a fishing routine, starting a hiking routine, uh, beginning to become a seamstress. Uh, maybe you want to become a millionaire or a millionaires. Maybe you want to um, open up a, a child care center. Uh, maybe you want to become licensed in the financial services. Maybe there's different things that you want to do, become, have or really, you know, um, foster your belief in. Maybe you want to develop your religious side. Um, there's all different things that are left untapped and unopened because of a result of being objectified. So you need to open these doors and give yourself what I call rehumanization. 
Give yourself back the, the, the feeling of touch. Getting, you know, soft blankets, nice fabrics, um, things that are really um, attuning to the skin, things that rub you the right way, so to speak. You know, um, and, it, and if you've, you know, perhaps needed to become a new kind of person with a new kind of style, then look at reinventing yourself style-wise. Um, do something that is attuning um, to the real you, perhaps when you were objectified, you had to be a specific way in order to uh, prevent the outbursts of this person. You had to constantly never talk. You had to constantly behave a certain way or dress a certain way or do a specific something just to please them, but it wasn't in acknowledgement of the true you. And really, I mean, that's why each person is unique. And just to coin a, a silly co you know, concept, but it's, you know, people are like snowflakes. No two are really alike. You can share qualities, you know, we can all be humans, but each person really is unique. But people do have heart, people do have mind, people do have spirit, and, you know, they have their physicality. Um, in this life. So um, when we talk about rewiring uh, the gaslighting, realize that the abuse belongs to the abuser. It has nothing to do with the real you and that, you know, you no longer want to be continue to be subjected to this. So separate yourself from that, basically that cause, which has, you know, um, occurred this in your life. Um, you know, drop it like a bad habit. I mean, it's just not good for you. And, um, and so then begin to rehabituate yourself doing the recovery journal, doing the sections in the recovery journal, doing the vision board, going on the recovery date, doing the recovery gift when you're going no contact and you're giving yourself a chance to reaffirm, you know, who you are, do the reinvent yourself process and become the real empowered and strengthened you. And, you know, uh, basically as they say, the road will rise to meet you. Um, life will, if you take the chance to really embark and stay on that healing revolution, the tools, the people, the solutions, the books, the sayings, the quips, the movies, the events, um, the travels will come, the positions will come, the, um, uh, you know, advancement in your career will come. You know, maybe you need to do a career, sh uh, career shift. You know, maybe you need to take some classes. Maybe you want to develop um, your artistic side, your writing side. Um, maybe you, you want to, you know, work with animals. Um, maybe you want to work in the outdoors. You know, you have a dream in you which is meant to be fulfilled. That's why you have the dream. And the, the tools will arrive to meet you because the dream is there for a purpose. And if it's been constantly trying to get your attention, but you haven't been able to acknowledge it because um, you've been dehumanized for so long that you haven't been able to actualize, it's important to take those steps and reactualize yourself and, and really begin to be more conditioned and programmed by your future versus the abuser and the life of the abuser. Peace and harmony with you here today. I hope these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.